Good news, you guys. We're getting our taxes cut. No, no, no. This is not a video from 2017. We're doing it again because we have to fight this high unemployment. Lowest unemployment in years. Okay, seems as though we solved that problem. Well, we have to solve this problem of a terrible economy. Wow, okay, never mind. We're in a very good economy right now. Talk about a solution in search of a problem. Does the economy need even more stimulus? Are you looking for a phase two? Tax We're doing a phase two. We'll be doing it probably in October, maybe a little sooner than that. And it'll be more of a middle class. We did a lot for the middle class, but this will be even more aimed at the middle class. One of the things we're thinking about is bringing the 21% down to 20. He's right. This is going to be more of a middle class tax cut, which is why we're bringing the corporate tax rate from 21 to 20%. Sounds like a plan. And I love that response too, because it's like, I mean, I know our last tax cut wasn't as helpful to the middle class because we were too focused on the corporate tax cuts. Don't worry though, we've rallied and realized that what we need to do to get tax cuts of the middle class is a corporate tax cut. I swear, for Republicans, corporate tax cuts are the answer to everything. Global warming? Well, have you tried cutting the corporate tax rate? Clog toilet? Eh, cut the corporate tax rate. Corporations not paying enough in taxes? Hmm, that's a tricky one. Wait, no it's not. Cut the corporate tax rate, then they'll make more money and have to pay more in taxes. I swear, how that thing isn't zero yet is beyond me. Now, it may seem like I'm down on tax cuts, but just being against tax cuts would be like a carpenter saying he's against hammers. It's a tool, and quite effective one at that. But if the nail's already in, you're gonna start breaking walls if you keep going. So let's look at what happened with those tax cuts before we start discussing the future. This will be the lowest top marginal income tax rate for small and medium sized businesses in more than 80 years. Now Republicans and Democrats, I know you guys don't normally see eye to eye on this issue, but it is insane to me in researching this episode how different both sides see the result of these cuts. A lot of people say that the corporate earnings are going to be the best we've seen in seven years because of the tax cuts. We are not going to have a country left because, as president, he has pushed us up to that $21 trillion in national debt, and he is now on track to reach new record debt levels way, way, way above that. It's, it's increasing the, the GDP by 2.9%, up to 2.9%. Uh, we had a 4% increase in retail sales this week. Last December, President Trump signed the Republican tax bill into law, touting the great volume of jobs it would bring back to America. Less than a month later, it was announced that about 800 workers at a Harley-Davidson factory in Kansas City, Missouri, were told they would lose their jobs. A few days after that, the company announced the purchase of up to 15 million shares of Harley-Davidson stock. Oh, geez, factories are closing, we're making more money, wages are stagnating, people are buying stocks, employment is at record low. All I can say is... What the hell is going on? Yeah, now fortunately enough for us, unlike a lot of the subjects we talk about, this stuff isn't that complicated. All right, so first, corporations. Now, corporations benefited in a major way from this last tax cut. I mean, if they failed to succeed after you cut their taxes from 35 to 21%, you got bigger problems. All right, so you have corporations making more money, and a lot more money. Specifically, in the first quarter, S&P 500 companies, or companies that are rich enough to the point where you'd actually recognize their names, made $69 billion in income growth, of which just under half of that was $30 billion in tax savings. So yeah, they've been doing well. This raises the first point of contention between liberals and conservatives. Why should I root for corporations? I mean, when I watch Jurassic Park, I'm not constantly rooting for InGen. So why should I love corporations? Well, corporations employ people and produce goods and services that people want. So when they get more money, because they have to pay less of it back to the government, they, well, geez, what do they do with it? Well, again, this is where pundits disagree. 
Harley Davidson is cutting jobs and repurchasing shares after last year's tax overhaul. Some major corporations saying that they will invest in their workers, hire more people and invest in America because of the tax deal. 81 percent said that they would invest in capital equipment, which would make workers more productive, which is what we need in this country. Again, it's really a lot simpler than all that because we can just see what they spend it on. 40% went to stock buybacks, 23% went to business investments, and 15% went to investments in employees. Well, okay. Now let's see if we can answer the incredibly subjective question of, was it worth it? First, why a stock buyback program? I mean, 40% of the funds went towards that. It sounds pretty important. Well, let's say you have a ton of money sitting around and pfft, they don't expect you to spend it on workers and investment. That won't help the bottom line. Nope, you spend it on your own stocks. Basically, what if I told you you could drastically improve the value of your company without having to expend the smallest amount of effort? Basically, you just buy your stock on the public market. It'll drive up prices, which is great for executives who get paid in stock options. And makes quarterly earnings look great because your stocks are through the roof, so clearly nothing is going wrong. So yeah, 40% of tax savings went to that. Then you have the 23% investment in machinery and physical things, which is pretty self-explanatory. Now this leaves us with the 15% that went to wages and bonuses. My basic understanding of economics is when unemployment is low and the economy is roaring, there's more competition for that scarce number of workers, wages ought to go up. Why are they not? Yeah, wage growth for employees really just hasn't happened. I mean, after the tax cut was announced, you saw a lot of one-time bonuses being handed out. Which is great, but those bonuses are looking about as reliable as that friend who checked maybe on your Facebook invite. The Hill reported that the change in weekly earnings would result in a $323 annual increase, nowhere near the minimum $4,000 promised and $9,000 potential annual increases projected by President Trump and Speaker Ryan if significant cuts were made to corporate tax rates. Alright, so why is that? I mean, if you give corporations money, won't they spend it on their employees? Well. Because the goal is to make money and you don't make money by handing it out to people. Think about it this way. Prices and wages change when there's a change in supply and demand. Tax cuts don't decrease the supply of the labor force or increase the size of demand. So why would they increase wages? You wouldn't think companies, unless they have like a union or someone really demanding strongly for them to give wage hikes from a tax cut, you wouldn't expect the company to do it on its own. You would expect them instead to invest in better um, equipment, in more other capital expenditures that make their company more productive. And then when their workers get more productive, they have to pay them more because they're producing more. And so in a weird way, the, it's a bank shot of wage growth that we're looking at, and the bank shot is not appearing in the data yet. Despite that, tax cuts to citizens could increase demand for product, which would in turn increase demand for labor, and then increase wages. But that just hasn't happened yet. Alright, so we have companies with money investing it in their own stocks, wages, and supplies. I did hear someone mention GDP growth. Uh, it's, it's increasing the, the GDP by 2.9%, up to 2.9%. Well, here's a graph charting US GDP growth. This is the time when the tax cuts went into effect. Well, that's not good. And this is when we were increasing the GDP by 2.9%. That said, our GDP grew by 4.1% as reported hours before this episode went out. So here's that portion of the graph. Well, that's good. I was beginning to lose my faith in tax cuts. A few things caused that. First, an explosion of exports. Yeah, that might seem weird considering. Now the global trade war between the United States and China is expected to dominate conversations at the BRICS summit. Basically, you know how if you're moving somewhere where you can't buy a product, you stock up? Yeah, we're experiencing that geopolitical equivalent of that with soybeans and other exports up more than 50% over previous quarters. This whole trade distortion thing is actually accounting for 1% of this 4% growth. Then you have the 3.5% increase in federal spending last quarter, which definitely didn't hurt. The rest though, well, 
That's fair game to claim with consumer spending rising over 4.3%. And consumer spending, well, that's a pretty big number to be taking a percentage out of considering we buy a bunch of stuff as a nation. This trend is being partially attributed to individual tax cuts. The final question is... President Trump on the verge of signing that $1.5 trillion tax overhaul, calling it a middle class miracle. Was it worth $1.5 trillion in foregone revenue? Now, you can't look at that $1.5 trillion on its own, otherwise this would be way too easy. You have to think about it in the context of GDP. Let's put it another way. Let's see I go into debt $1,000 because of student loans, but I make $10,000 a year because of them. If you just look at the $1,000 student loan, well, of course that's going to look like a bad investment, but I'm actually making enough to pay down those loans. So I'm not going to go into too much detail on this because it's super speculative and educated guesses is not my game. But so far, on average, since the tax cuts, the economy has grown slower than expected. Two decades ago, it came out that the Office of Management and Budget said that this month it had revised the forecast from earlier this year to account for nearly $1 trillion of additional debt over the next decade, on average of almost $100 billion more a year in deficits. So why is that? I mean, 4.1% growth, that's gotta account for something. Well, companies may be earning a lot, but the tax cut law introduced a standard corporate rate of 21%, down from a high of 35%, and allowed companies to immediately deduct many new investments, putting corporate tax receipts near a 75 year low as a share of the economy. Oh boy, do I miss this guy. We have a tremendous debt. We're at 17 trillion dollars, a number that was unthinkable you do have a debt ceiling because they don't want to go above a certain amount. Now, the thing should have been looked at, in all fairness, during the Bush administration and certainly during the Obama administration because it's going through the roof. All right, so our debt is now over $21 trillion. But again, we have to view that in the context of revenue. So, huh, Business Insider says that our debt is growing 36% faster than our economy as of March 21st, 2018. Well, that's really not a great sign. Don't worry though, because we're coming to the happy part of the show. Because I want to look at a little more into those proposed tax cuts that might be coming into effect when again? Does the economy need even more stimulus? Are you looking for a phase two tax We're plan? doing a phase two. We'll be doing it probably in October, maybe a little sooner than that. Hey, that's just in time for the November 6th midterms. I'm sure that's a complete coincidence though. Up front. This might be the tax reform we've been waiting for if we wanted to increase the GDP and create jobs. Although, again, we're kind of killing it right now in those two areas. It gives new startup companies a lot more room to write off expenses, gives a lot more leeway to people who want to use the retirement account and education funds for paying down student loans and pursuing alternate methods for schooling. and. It makes permanent a lot of the individual tax cuts that were implemented during the previous tax bill. Most importantly for some, despite the fact that Trump is consistently suggesting it, it does not at this point explicitly mention the corporate tax rate anywhere. Point I'm trying to make is, if we didn't have an amazing economy right now with a terrible debt problem, I would probably think this could work. As of right now though, this might literally be the worst circumstances for putting in a tax cut. Thank you and that's all I have to say about that. Hello YouTube, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to support independent nonpartisan comedy news, remember to subscribe by clicking this floating logo to the right of my head, or do it the old fashioned way by clicking the subscribe button below. Remember to give me a thumbs up, and as always, thank you for watching.